I was always aware that green tea is extremely healthy, right? But doing more research on this, I would really categorize green tea, like you know this one here, which you brew, very simple. I use that every day. Or this one here, EGCG, which is one of the polyphenols that's contained in green tea. Actually, it's the most abundant one. They call them catechins. So this is one of the active ingredients that's in there. 70% of it actually is in there. So the other ones are a bit less. There's EGCG and ECG and EGC and so on. So these are called catechins, and these are kind of the active ingredients in green tea that elicit these effects. So I would really classify green tea as a drug when it comes to treating and preventing cancer. I know that's a very strong statement. And I guarantee you that the big drug companies like you know Pfizer, Moderna, Eli Lilly, man, they would love to take green tea, slap a patent on it, and make billions of dollars. It's just that good because they would have a medication that is extremely powerful, has very few, if any, side effects, and um, is really something that most people will tolerate and will treat cancer and prevent cancer very effectively. And we're going to talk about um, you know, all the specifics of that right now. So in a 2018 publication in Molecules titled Puzzle Mechanisms of Green Tea and Its Constituents Against Cancer, they did a really nice summary of, of how the actions of green tea are thought to happen, how, how, how they think this really actually treats active cancer, right? So someone has cancer, how does green tea actually help? And I think it's a very good summary. It's still complicated, but it was a bit easier to understand than some other publications because it becomes, you know, there's a lot of biochemistry here, obviously, right? But again, so the main um, catechin in there, this main active ingredient in green tea is EGCG. And it's a supplement that people can buy always before you use any supplement, talk to your primary care doctor if this is okay for you, of course, right? With anything, even with these more natural supplements, there is a point when you can take too much of something and you may have a you know, predisposing condition where you shouldn't take it. I would think that would be very rare in this case, but always you know, discuss this with your physician. So EGCG does a few things. Number one, it actually actively suppresses the growth of cancer cells. And that is really fascinating. I've done this in cell cultures, they've done it in animal studies, you know, where they really saw giving just the supplement EGCG in a specific dose that was very well tolerated, or in cell culture really showed that these, it suppressed the growth of these cancer cells. So these tumors just wouldn't get bigger, right? Cancer usually um, is um, uh, growing rapidly, right? These cells are dividing very fast and uh, EGCG, so the green tea really suppressed that. That was the first thing they noticed, right? So another mechanism of action is that it suppresses the cell proliferation and colony formation. So besides, you know, the, the, you know, the individual cells growing, it's also like how they grow together, how they interact with each other. And uh, this colony formation was suppressed as well. So there are different ways in which, or different um, ways in, in which they can observe how cancer is growing. And many of these have been influenced by green tea, right? Thirdly, there was an anti-inflammatory action, which was hugely important here. So as these tumors grow, there's a lot of inflammation going on and suppressing inflammation stops or decreases the growth. And it's strongly anti-inflammatory. Of course, when we think about preventive strategies, we know that inflammation of times is actually at the root of developing cancer. And um, so bringing down inflammation is something that's very important in the development of, you know, to, to stop this because inflammation is at the root of many diseases. And if we can decrease inflammatory processes as a, uh, the body as a whole can actually be healthier, right? Another uh, mechanism was the induction of apoptosis, which is programmed cell death of cancer cells. So cancer cells, again, these are malfunctioning cells. Um, I did a video and I really encourage you to watch that, cancer as a metabolic disorder. I think it's important to understand that to help understand how um, apoptosis uh, factors in here as well. Now, um, cancer as a metabolic disorder believes that, you know, uh, the theory is that uh, cancer starts in the mitochondria, where mitochondria are first damaged then produce radical oxygen species, which then travel and actually cause damage in the nucleus of the cell, in the DNA. You know, most physicians today and oncologists see cancer as a genetic disorder. They're saying, well, for some reason, there was some environmental impact or radiation or chemical or um, just bad genetics, where suddenly you have uh, mutations in your DNA and these mutations um, cause the cell to divide uncontrolled. They take out mechanisms that control the division of the cell and suddenly, whatever cell this is divides like crazy and forms these tumors. And that's what cancer is. And then it can spread to other sides of the body, right? So metabolic therapy says, well, it, cancer most likely doesn't start with, you know, DNA uh, breakage or DNA mutations, 
but cancer starts in the mitochondria, right? The mitochondria are the powerhouses, the, these kind of cells inside, all, inside of our cells that make energy, right? That take in glucose usually and make energy in the form of ATP, which we then use, but they also regulate cell division. So uh, metabolic theory says that it's the mitochondria that are more important here in the formation of cancer. And it makes sense. And in this other video, I've shown this and I'm going to uh, show this here quickly. Um, studies were done where you take a cancer cells. So you have damage in the DNA in the nucleus and you have uh, these malfunctioning mitochondria. And you take this cancer cell, you take out the nucleus with the damage in the DNA, you put a healthy nucleus inside with a healthy DNA, but it continues to divide as a cancer cell, even though there's no more damage in the DNA, right? And then vice versa, um, they did the opposite where they take um, a healthy cell with healthy mitochondria and they put a cancer nucleus in there with damaged DNA and that cell actually stayed a healthy cell. So again, it seems that the mitochondria are very much important here, right? So what can green tea do? So green tea tells these cells, hey, there's something wrong with you. You're dividing weird. There's something wrong with your mitochondria. Um, you should really kill yourself because that's what you're programmed to do. And the cell then actually says, oh, you know, that's actually a good idea. I actually am contributing to a lot of problems in my host here. I'm going to probably just commit suicide and I'm out. And that is ap apoptosis. That's what a cell should do. So any cell that becomes old or more functioning is usually uh, um, undergoing apoptosis, so programmed cell death. And it kind of induces that in cancer cells specifically. Very important. <clears throat> Another function is an antioxidant function. It has antioxidant activity. We've known it for a very long time about green tea. It's a very strong antioxidant. Why is that important? Remember what I said about the mitochondria. Mitochondria get damaged. They produce these radical oxygen species. Those are basically um, radicals that um, cause oxidation. Oxidation is, means they cause damage. They cause damage within the mitochondria and they can cause damage in the nucleus and cause damage in the DNA and cause these uh, mutations to form, right? What does an antioxidant do? It takes these radicals and it takes them out. It deactivates them. And green tea is a very strong antioxidant. So it reduces the risk of these oxidants to cause further damage, right? Another function it has is it modulates the immune system. And I think this is hugely important and underestimated. Your immune system, if it functions well, prevents you from getting cancer, right? How do we know this? Well, think of diseases where the immune system is damaged. One we can always think of is when HIV is not treated appropriately and progresses to AIDS, right? So acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Um, we have suppressed white blood cell counts. We have a suppressed immune system, right? This immune system is quite weak now. And what is one of the risks in cancer? How do people die of, of AIDS? They die of infections or cancer. So cancers can develop. Why? Cancers can develop because the immune system is not working anymore to kill off these cells that are at the verge of becoming cancer cells. Usually your immune system is very good at this. It weeds out viruses and bacteria, but also our own cells as they become functioning. So modulating the immune system is actually very, very important because that allows your own body to fight off cancer cells and to kill off cancer cells. So that's another mechanism, right? And um, another one, it has, of course, many preventive effects. So this was a whole host of effects that were really mind-blowing to me when I read this on how many levels green tea can actively fight cancer. As a, another mechanism of how green tea can actively um, work against cancer, I'm linking another couple of studies on there, is that it can block glutamine. So it can block the um, uptake of glutamine, which is very, very important. And again, this goes back to cancer as a, as a metabolic disorder. So, um, you know, scientists like uh, Dr. Som Thomas Seyfried have found that, you know, cancer can live on two fuels. And this is very important to understand. It can live on glucose and glutamine. And for a while we thought it was just glucose, sugar. And we're using this in PET scans, right? We radioactively label sugar molecules. There's a little radioactive trace on a sugar molecule. Cancer takes up a lot of sugar because it can only ferment the sugar, which reduces, which produces very little energy. A healthy cell takes a sugar molecule, makes like 36 ATP. That's our energy consumption. It makes a lot of energy. Cancer can only ferment, makes like 2 ATP. So it needs sugar after sugar after sugar after sugar to grow and divide, right? And if we take the sugar away, we know this, which is something that we do when we implement a ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet reduces all sugars and carbohydrates in general, because carbohydrates are just long chains of sugars, right? And forces the body to work on um, ketones. Ketones are broken down fat. The liver breaks them down, makes these ketone bodies. And it's a different type of fuel. 
So all your healthy cells can use that and they actually like it. It's a clean burning fuel. It's like an electric car, right? Whereas sugar is more like a, a diesel engine, which produces actually a lot of exhaust. It's actually uh, more polluting than uh, the ketone bodies will be, right? But anyway, but again, but sugar usually is the preferred fuel. As long as we have sufficient sugar, that's what we run on. When we cut down sugar, your healthy cells will use ketone bodies and they like it actually better. And it's actually a bit, a bit healthier, at least short term, I believe. Now, the problem is cancer cells cannot because they have malfunctioning mitochondria. These mitochondria, they are not working very well, so they can't, right? So cancer needs two fuels. It needs glucose and or glutamine, right? And both of those are only getting fermented, so it's a really poor energy balance that it has. So again, we've taken away glucose through a ketogenic diet, and then glutamine can be blocked intermittently, intermittently only because Glutamine is a non-essential amino acid. What does that mean? That just means it's an amino acid that your own body can make. So even if you restrict yourself of proteins, and you always need some, otherwise, you know, proteins are important, right? Protein and fats is something that you really need. Those are very essential, right? But if you decrease protein, it, it wouldn't help because your own body makes this stuff, right? Now, when we take an inhibitor of glutamine, which decreases the amount that enters cells and actually specifically decreases it, when it enters cancer cells. And this is very important to understand because we want to really block it from going into the cancer cell, right? Cancer cells are guzzling up glutamine and glucose in order to have uh, to produce energy to live, right? And because they're malfunctioning, they need a lot of this stuff, right? Now, green tea can block the uptake of glutamine, right? So we can actually decrease the amount of fuel that goes into the cancer cells, taking away it's lifeblood, so to speak, right? Without that, it's going to perish, right? We're taking away the food. So that's why cancer as a metabolic disorder, I think this is a very important concept, right? That I think works um, very much together with other uh, treatments that people can do, right? Then we can target cancer cells and some people opt to do metabolic therapy plus, let's say, chemotherapy at a lower dose or radiation. Of course, surgery is an option, of course, right? Or some theories that don't involve all that, right? Say so they can do, you know, metabolic therapy, uh, metabolic therapy, and they use then um, on top of that they might use some other supplements, or they use instead of green tea or with green tea, another medication that can block glutamine. So there's different ways that the people can do this. Always talk to your oncologist, of course, and discuss everything with them. Of course, this is very important to see uh, what's best for you, of course, right? But um, this was very fascinating that green tea actually is one of the, and especially again, the uh, EGCG here again is the really um, active ingredient that um, uh, really helps to decrease the glutamine um, intake, right? So that's a very important other function that green tea has actively fighting cancer, right? But also when we think about the, about the prevention of cancer, you know, making sure that we don't take in too much sugar, right? Again, sugar is not good cause diabetes. And what happens when you have diabetes? Metabolic disorder. Why is metabolic disorder bad? Because it damages mitochondria. Again, if we think that cancer starts with damaging mitochondria, then we should really get better at controlling our blood sugars, right? Make sure we don't go to be type 2 diabetics, right? Make sure we don't have impaired glucose tolerance, which is, you know, a pre-stage of type 2 diabetes. Measure your hemoglobin A1C regularly, you know, decrease total carbohydrate intake at least, you know, like modulate that avoid simple sugars, right? And then also take in even preventively something like green tea or some supplement like that, that decreases the uptake of glutamine, you know, there's still some getting in, but it decreases it to be uh, available in amounts that cancer cells could guzzle up, right? That could be something again as a preventive strategy as well, of course. So as I mentioned before, green tea or its um, active ingredient, EGCG, as you can see right here, this is just one example of that, right? Um, of course, green tea comes in these bags. Always, by the way, if you get green tea, always get organic because, I mean, you want to make sure that it's not sprayed with pesticides or anything like that because they obviously they can't wash these leaves, right? But um, a green tea is very powerful in actually treating cancer. But also, I think for most of us, the interesting uh, uh, aspect is in the prevention of cancer, right? And uh, the publication titled Implications of Green Tea and its Constituents in the Prevention of Cancer via Modulation of Cell Signaling Pathways. This was from 2015. Uh, showed like, you know, four different mechanisms really here. And I thought it was very interesting. So it talks about, number one, that green tea inhibits cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase, um, tumor necrosis factor and uh, interleukin pathways, and alters or inhibits 
the development and progression of tumors, right? So it really kind of has these um, um, interesting enzymatic pathways where it really blocks the progression of the tumors. And I thought that was very fascinating to see. So preventive wise, you know, tumors usually start out with a few cells and, and the sooner we can modulate this, the sooner our immune system picks this up or, you know, the sooner we can uh, downregulate the growth of these to allow time for the immune system to recognize these cells. I think this is very valuable as a preventive strategy, right? So secondly, green tea showed uh, chemoprotective effects via activation of tumor suppressor genes. So it turns on specific genes that suppress the development of tumors, right? Um, regulation of apoptosis. And I talked about this before. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. So when our cells uh, become malfunctioning or on the verge of becoming cancer cells, or, they are already, or, or if they're already cancer cells, usually early on in the early stages, uh, cells, uh, they realize this and say, hey, I have so many issues. This is not working. I've got problems here in my DNA. I think it's best if I just kill myself to protect the host from problems later, right? And um, cancer cells, they override this somehow, and it, they don't do ap apoptosis anymore, so they don't kill themselves. But green tea can turn this on in these early malfunctioning cells, but also in active cancer cells. It can remind them, hey, listen, you shouldn't really be here, right? You're causing problems. That's just, you should just go out, you know, and then they, they generally do that. So that's an interesting function that green tea actually has, right? Um, inhibition of angiogenesis is another one. And this is usually a bit later. It means like um, basically blood vessel formation. So as these tumors grow, as they become bigger, they need better blood supply, right? Initially, there's just a few cells and they get enough nutrients coming in. But later on, they need actually their own network of um, blood supply, right? By building all these little blood vessels and green tea inhibits that. So they can't do that. So they can't get enough nutrients into the tumor. So a lot of times the tumors then they, they die off because they can't get enough um, supply of nutrients, right? And then the other transcription factors involved. But I thought this is very, very interesting um, that this really has all these green, green tea really, you know, or the active ingredient, you know, uh, EGCG, of course, has all these, you know, uh, mechanisms by which it specifically targets cancer cells. I mean, it's really uh, fantastic. It's not just a single mechanism. It's a pretty complicated thing. And I know this is a lot of biochemistry, but um, I thought it was really interesting uh, to see all the things that, that it does. And again, it will have very, very little, if any, side effects. And then thirdly, you know, um, antioxidant activity, that's very important as well. I've talked about that before. It neutralizes free radicals, right? And antioxidant and green tea is, of course, not the only one. There's many antioxidants that we, that we know, but it's a very potent one, right? Why do we need to neutralize these free radicals? Again, when we think about cancer as a metabolic disorder, even starting in the mitochondria, one of the things as these mitochondria become malfunctioning and they can't do citric acid cycle anymore, they cannot really uh, process glucose very well, they also start to build up a lot of uh, radical oxygen species. So they, they build up these radicals. These are highly reactive uh, uh, molecules. So you got to think about uh, damaging, you know, little bombs that go off everywhere in your cell and damage things, right? And, 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 and antioxidant uh, neutralizes these before they cause damage, right? That's why antioxidants are extremely important. Green tea is a very specifically um, strong antioxidant, and it's very good at you know, getting rid of these free radicals that build up in cells as they become cancer cells, right? Another function of green tea is that you know, it uh, modulates genes in the um, initiation, promotion, and progression of tumors. So as these uh, tumors uh, start to grow, um, you know, there are certain uh, genetic uh, functions that allow the tumor to grow very fast. And green tea can sort of turn off some of these, right? And that's a very interesting function as well. So it works sort of on a genetic level by decreasing the ability of these tumor cells or all of these cancer cells to divide rapidly, right? It actively modulates that down. So again, and these are, of course, uh, we can think of these as preventive strategies, but also as treatment strategies. And, and as, I, as I mentioned before, there's a whole host of mechanisms that green tea has. I think of it as a drug. Um, again, I think that the big pharma companies, you know, Pfizer, Moderna, uh, Eli Lilly, Bayer, whoever else, they would love to have something like this with a patent and say, hey, look what we can do. And here's a big study that we can produce. Fortunately for us, um, there's no patent on green tea. Talk to your doctor, talk to your oncologist if you have cancer, if this is something that you can use. Um, it can be used, I believe, with other strategies, of course. You know, it can be complementary to other strategies. But I think green tea is a very important uh, part of preventing cancer or treating cancer. And I think it is very, very safe. And I haven't seen a lot of issues with it in people. Um, again, always talk to your doctor if you can take it, if you're okay to take it, and the dose 
in which you are allowed to take it.